Hello everyone, and happy Lightfall to you all. We have many new changes applied with the expansion, with one of them streamlining builds to make them more user friendly, which I will admit is incredibly nice. I'll be playing around with them more to see what they offer, but today's video is going to show you a brief example of the new system at play. Stasis turret builds are one of the strongest setups available for slowing down encounters for any content, and today's build is going to be focused around the strength of them with the new Verglas Curve Exotic Bow. Effectively, the build will allow us to have a high turret uptime no matter where we are, great at clearing, strong shutdown potential, increased stasis weapon damage, and fast ability regen all round. If you haven't completed Legendary Campaign just yet and want an easy way around it, then this build is going to be just for you. To start, you're going to want to have Bleak Watchers, so you can turn your grenades into stasis turrets. Then you want Ice Flare Bolt so that when you shatter a target, it will spawn Seekers that will freeze others it touches. Nice and easy aspect section, since you don't need to worry so much as Bleak Watchers are the main aspect you really need. Before, I would use Glacial Harvest with Elemental Shards mods so that we can convert shards into worlds instead, but because of the uptime, but because of the update, the Elemental Shards mods do not exist anymore. This means that we have to rely on a different source of energy, which luckily we can still do via Whispers of Shards. Now, the fragments used will provide the best uptime available for all of our abilities. So, Whisper of Durance increases the slowdown effects of our abilities. Whispers of Chains, where freezing targets or creating stasis crystals, will provide you with a damage reduction. Whisper of Fissures, which increases the shattered damage done and Whispers of Shards where shattering crystals will temporarily boost grenade regen. One of the key fragments needed for the build will be Whispers of Shards, as thanks to the update, we have lost a crucial method that many people are used to as mentioned before. With the new bow, we can create stasis crystals as we please, and then combine them with shards to increase our net gain. This also means that some of the mods being used can be less restrictive, and we can build into damage more if we desire. For the mods and stats section, a lot of things we are used to have been changed for better, which means mods we are used to always using are now updated. Our end game goal is to make sure we are able to produce turrets as we please with little cooldown. Using Osiomancy will greatly help with providing us with two turrets instead of one, which we can use to our advantage in heavily contested areas. From here, I would advise you to have a tier 7 to tier 10 discipline stat so you can always have grenades passively available after one is being used. We want to make sure that even with one grenade used, our second grenade can passively regenerate fast without any support just in case. From here, this is where the new armor charge mechanics then kick in. Grenade Kickstart is going to give us a boost in grenade energy return after we use our grenade, which with Whispers of Shard and Tier 10 Discipline means that grenade users overall will be consistent. However, you will need armor charges to retain Kickstar as long as possible. So, Charged Up and Stacks and Stacks will provide you with additional armor charge each. We then have Empowered Finish which can also grant us a armor charge if we don't have any via finishers. And the most important one of the lot is the Time Dilation mod, which will increase the duration of the armor charges before you collect another one. Make sure you have a Stasis or Harmonic Cypher mod on as well, so you can produce orbs of power and then you're good from there. The rest of the stats and mods can be defined down to what the user requires the most in end game or in general. So resilience at tier 7 plus is a good start since you will have a damage reduction while near frozen targets. Recovery can also follow this route since class ability is easy to regen with warlocks. And then intellect can stay at tier 3 to form as with Font of Wisdom round we can add on another plus 50 to start alone. Left over, we then have powerful friends where collecting the orb of power causes nearby allies to increase their armor charge by plus one, and stasis weapon surge times two for a stasis damage buff. Now lastly, the weapon being used will be of course the Virgil's Curve Exotic Bow. This is the first exotic stasis bow to be introduced to the game, and its core perk design is to net precision kills and build up arrows so you can produce more stasis crystals as you go. This is basically the whole first Z of weapons, which may sound lackluster to a few, but this is actually really useful for stasis users. Remember when I said Elemental Shards isn't a thing anymore and Whispers of Shards has to take over? Well, this is where the bow comes in handy, as the crystal created will activate Whispers of Shards effect for the build, and with the uptime available, we can easily sustain a long duration of grenades whenever we like. 
the strength of the weapon is pretty good and stats are pretty alright, but it states that effect and the ability to spawn crystals as you like means that you don't need to use a weapon with headstone all the time, or even switch grenades to achieve your goal. This is incredibly useful and something I see getting picked up over time for end game depending on the activity. Since stasis has been heavily used, you want to use a waveframe ideally, so you can net more kills easily. The forbearance with chain reaction is the go-to with achieving this, and also has its orange trait which will heal you upon more kills, which is a must if you use this for end game. We also have the new dimensional hypertory grenade launcher, which is also a waveframe but stasis, so we'll get the bonus stasis surge once active. Although it would be best to have a different heavy in use, I found that the four I got was actually pretty useful when combined with stasis. Envious Assassin is basically Ambitious Assassin, except that defeating targets with other weapons will overthrow the weapon in reserve, which when you combine with Chain Reaction and its origin trait which turns the next shot into a homing missile, it becomes incredibly deadly against bosses. I honestly recommend you try and get this role as it's worked a charm with stasis heavy hitter builds. So the conclusion. The new mod update has allowed common builds we are familiar with to be a lot more streamlined, which means newer players who join can be on the same level as a veteran player without worrying so much about which mods are required here and there. This makes the stasis turret build very easy to build into as long as you have your aspect, fragments and core weapon available. Yes, having Ozymancy helps with fast grenades, but this can be swapped out for something else if you don't have it, and this here doesn't render the build useless, oh no. You can still use it as long as you have some of the other key items as mentioned before. Interestingly, I wanted to see how strong the build with the new update would be like in the higher difficulty, and decided to use it in the Legend campaign. Not surprisingly, the build meets all expectations with being a crowd controller, and is great with slowing down the pace of any encounter, which gives enough breathing room for the player or allies. The grenade cooldown are, as expected, damage is good and can be made better, and flexibility of the mods means that even if we don't have one specific key mod in use, this build will not fall apart. However, although the build is really good, I feel that the mod system has been stripped down way too much, with key mods such as elemental shards being removed from the system. Now I do not know why, but this one mod could have been changed to provide armor charges instead of elemental worlds, and yet it was removed instead which makes a number of builds that use status shards redundant. I need to find an alternative source. I'm hoping they will reintroduce some of the mods removed as this wasn't what I envisioned when they mentioned they wanted to make builds be more common and easier for players, but it is how it is I guess. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all. I hope to see you again soon.